Hi, and welcome to day 19 of National Diabetes Awareness Month. Every single day this month, I'm doing a video about a various topic, diabetes. Today's topic is about my travel day. So I currently am in Atlanta, and I traveled on Friday, today's Sunday. I'm getting this video up a day late, but it's okay. There'll be a day in the next 10 days that I do two videos and catch up, but in the meantime, I'm not gonna stress and I'm with family and stuff. So gonna try to prioritize that, but you still will be getting one video every day and then one day you'll just get two videos. It'll be great. I was planning on like doing almost like a day in the lifestyle where I'm like talking to the camera and like walking through the airport and stuff. Then I realized that carrying a bag and, a, and the carry-on and my coffee. <laughs> in my phone and my pump i could not film myself so i took some like weird videos that i'll just sprinkle in throughout this but um, i'm really just going to talk you through my travel day and just some considerations that i have please be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel i really appreciate the support we have 10 days left of national diabetes awareness month which means 10 more videos ah i can't believe i'm at the final like third of this project it's crazy i've had so much fun doing it so First and foremost, if you watch my packing video, that has everything that I bring with me. And as I mentioned in that video, I put everything in my carry-on. I never, ever check diabetes things on the plane. I also make sure that, you know, you have all that stuff. Like I put it all in this like zip up bag in my suitcase. I also make sure that when I'm at walking around the airport in the airplane, I have like enough of my stuff in an easily accessible place. So I don't have to like rip open my suitcase if I need to find a charger or something. I have everything that I might need in like a small purse or just in my hand. So for example, on Friday, I walked around with just my phone and my pump together. And then in my like purse, which was just like, it's just like a really small purse. It's, I don't, I just like throw it into my bag when I'm boarding. It's not even like considered like the personal item or the carry on. I had an extra pen, an extra pen needle, and my Omnipod charger, just in case. Like those are the only things that I think I would really need, and low snacks. Uh, security is the next step. So when I'm going through security, first of all, I always make sure that I have enough low snacks when I'm in security. Because I'm in an airport and I'm walking a lot, sometimes in an airport I do drop low. Sometimes I drop high, like it, there's no like, cause that I have, but I just make sure that I am well prepared that if I'm standing in the security line for like an hour, my blood sugar starts to drop, I don't have to like get out of line and go find something or flag someone down to help me get something or anything. So I just make sure I have enough low snacks to get me through security at the very least. Um, security on Friday wasn't too bad. It was maybe like a 30 minute wait. It is like the holidays, Thanksgiving. So there were like a good amount of people that were traveling. I was actually dropping a little bit low during security. So I'm glad that I had, I had like little fruit bars and I was so happy that I had just put them like in my little purse instead of like in my bag where I would have had to like put my bag down and dig through it. So tip one, easily accessible stuff while you're in security too. Now security itself, um, I'm, again, everything in this video is my personal experience. If you want to follow the rules, I would go onto whatever, whoever manufactures your pump and CGM and double check what they say about airport security because different ones will say different things. I personally go through any machine with my stuff. I just, I just walk right through. I don't have the pat down instead of it, and I've never had problems. I travel a lot, not during COVID, but I, I do go on airplanes probably more than the average and never had problems. So if you want to do that, great. If you don't, see what your manufacturer says and follow their advice. But personally, I go through. I said that on Instagram once and people got so mad. They were like, you can't go through security with that. I was like, I do. Like, I've never had issues. Never, ever in my life. Again, do what you are comfortable with. So, when I go through security, this is what always happens. So, you know the machine where you stand like this? I'll put a picture of it there. And it's like the scanner. Um, that one, if I go through, typically it will like notice that there's like a lump on me somewhere. If it's like on, on Friday, it was on my lower back. 
and typically what they'll do is they'll do just like a really short pat down they literally just go like and then they'll make me take my hands and like touch my pump with it like this and then they'll swab my hands and check for like residue of what could be harmful <laughs> or you know um it literally takes 30 seconds and then i'm just off to get my stuff but i always stop after that scanner because i know that they're gonna make me stop to do the whole pat down and make me just like rub my hand to me i'm like whatever it's not a big deal they're doing their job they're trying to keep us safe um if i'm polite and compliant i've I've literally never had an issue with airport security. So I make it easy for them. I'll be like, oh, it's an, it's an insulin pump. Like, feel free to pat me down. I've never had any problem with my stuff going through the x-ray. Um, and in any chance that I did do the x-ray instead of the scanner, I've also never had any tr trouble. And typically I don't even do a pat down if I go through the x-ray because they don't, that's not how they detect it. So again, that's my experience. I've literally never had anything stopped or searched or checked that was diabetes related beside that scanner thing when they just asked me to do the residue. The hardest part I think about traveling for me is not the diabetes, but it's actually the celiac <laughs> because unless you're in a really good airport with like a lot of options, um, if you're in a smaller terminal, oftentimes like the only options to eat like an actual meal are gluten. <laughs> So my trouble isn't even with this with the diabetes stuff at this point. It's more with the celiac stuff So once I'm through security, I typically, you know, depending on the time of day or whatever I eat um, I had not eaten on Friday at all So I was so hungry and all of the restaurants that had gluten-free stuff were like sit down And I really only had like 40 minutes and they were pretty crowded So I was like, okay I need to find something that's gonna hold me over for like the flight because I didn't land until like 4 and then by the time you get to the Airbnb and stuff it was 5 So I was looking for a lunch that was gluten-free and I came across those vending machines that have like the healthy food in them and I ended up getting this like quinoa mediterranean bowl um and i got cheese on it too just because i wanted a little bit of extra like substance it was so good I, I see them in a lot of airports and i've never used them but i it was actually really good and i was happy with that so i definitely try to eat if i want to and uh, i had a coffee obviously when i am eating in an airport i'm biased in saying this because i'm like typically a person who likes to eat healthy anyway but especially in an airport i try to find something that is like not going to be too tough on my blood sugars like i'm not going to go eat like a basket of french fries because i don't want to be high the whole flight like that's the worst feeling so i definitely try to eat something that i feel confident in how i'll bullish for it even if i don't know exactly like i've never eaten this mediterranean salad before but i've eaten quinoa before i kind of knew what was in it it actually had the nutrition facts on the back which was really helpful so once i've eaten i feel good I'm also drinking a lot of water. And this is before I even get to the airport. I just always like to stay hydrated, diabetes wise and just like health wise. When I'm actually on the flight, I do, I will put my diabetes stuff like up because it's usually in my bigger bag. But I always, again, just keep the stuff that I might need in my bag that's under my seat. So if I needed anything, I don't have to like get up and like pull it down or something in order to get what I need. I have it literally right there. So name of the game for everything in airports is just having what you may need easily accessible. That's that's what I follow. During this flight in particular, I was hovering. I was like 150-ish, which like is a little bit higher than I like to be. I was giving some corrections, but I had also just eaten before I got on. So it was kind of, that like pre bowls but it definitely was a little bit more stubborn than normal i was correcting i had some almonds on the plane i had some like sparkling water you know in terms of like flying if you guys have specific questions let me know but i feel like it's pretty straightforward once you're through security i feel like that's the only thing that can like trip people up with like not knowing what to do but the rest of it is just like managing your diabetes what i hear most often is that people tend to be a little bit more insulin resistant during the flight and obviously I experienced this too. I don't know if it's because of what I ate or the flight itself, but I think it's just a combination of the fact that oftentimes we're eating food that we're not used to in an airport. And then we're sitting for like an extended period of time and not moving at all. I also know that, and I hesitate saying this because I don't want to scare people. 
there has been like mention that because of the changes in the pressure like that something can expand and it can give you insulin I've taken like so many flights with pumps and i've never had this happen ever if anything in the air I'm more insulin resistant. My blood sugars are high or not lower. I just I just want to let you guys know like that is that is a concern I personally never had trouble ever 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 had trouble <laughs> and Lastly getting off the plane. I just leave. I've never had to do a sight change or anything Weird on a plane, but if I did I just find a way I probably just do it in my seat to be honest I try not to stress too much if my blood sugars are a little bit more resistant on the plane just because like it's what three hours out of my life and as long you know if i was like 300 i'd probably be a little bit more aggressive in correcting but the other thing that i try to remember is that if i correct too much for on the flight typically there's like a long walk to the baggage claim and i don't want to be dropping low on my long walk so uh, i got off this flight my brothers met me picked me up brought me to the airbnb and all is good that was my travel day i hope that you enjoyed this and please be sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you back here tomorrow.